Let's continue building our resume by adding an image. Remember that HTML processes code serially, meaning that it processes things from top to bottom and left to right. CSS will be an exception to this rule, but for now, our code will be processed from top to bottom. With that in mind, I want our image to go at the very top, so I'm going to add some space to work with before our H4 tag. Next, let's add an image tag. The first thing that you will notice is that when I create my image tag, the code editor doesn't automatically create a closing tag. This is because, like the BR tag you learned about in the last video, there is no end to an image. It is simply a single point in the HTML file. Images are different because the image file, along with attributes that you will add, contain the data necessary to display the picture on our website. This makes an ending tag unnecessary. Images need to be given certain attributes, like where to get the image and the size of the image. This is the perfect segue to reminding you about attributes. Remember that attributes are rules that the browser follows to display something on a web page. Up until now, all of the attributes that you have come across are default attributes. The spacing the browser adds after text wrapped in an H4 tag is an example of a default attribute. You can override or add new attributes to your HTML tags. You can add an attribute by positioning your cursor between the element name and the greater than sign, and then adding a space. The first attribute that I'm going to show you is the source attribute. If you start typing S, the context menu will pop up and you can highlight different attributes and then hit tab or enter to automatically complete it. I recommend doing this because the code editor won't make a spelling mistake. You might. I have seen students who have spent hours debugging their websites only to have me take a look at it for 20 seconds and find out that they made a spelling mistake. This could have been avoided if they had let the code editor complete their code for them. When I let the editor autocomplete my source attribute, it will put SRC with an equal sign and an opening and closing double quote. Notice that there are no spaces between the equal sign and the double quote. My editor color codes my attributes a slightly different color than my elements. Now, let us complete our attribute by pasting the URL of our image that we are going to select. Let's look up some pictures of Homer Simpson, and then we want to click on the image that we want to use. When we get to this level, you want to right-click on the image and select Copy Image Address. This is going to save the address for locating this image into memory. We are then going to paste it between the double quotes. Save and check your work. It will grab the image and all of its attributes in the original size, so if you grabbed a large image, it may be huge. This method allows you to save storage on your machine, but it comes with a downside. The downside is that you are linking your image to another website, so if the owner of that website moves or changes their image, it will no longer work and your image will disappear on your website. You are accepting the risk that your website depends on the dependability of somebody else's website. I don't usually do this unless I have to for copyright laws. The preferred method that I will now show you is to go to the image, and this time you will right click and select Save Image As, and then store it in the same folder as your HTML page. I stored my folder in my desktop directory, so I'm going to select my desktop and then open my web demo folder. Before I hit Save, I'm going to rename my file to something that is descriptive and easy to use. I will rename it to Homer Simpson with Donut. It shows here that it is saving it as a PNG file. You might see it as an IMG, GIF, JPG, or JPEG. There are lots of different file types that are supported by HTML, and we won't get into the differences between these. Make sure to save your file in the same folder that your HTML file is in for now, or else the next part won't work for you. Once that is saved, it appears here in the Explorer portion of the code editor. Now, we will get rid of this old code and we will start typing the name of the file. I want to stop you right here and say that you should let your code editor autocomplete this. This will prevent a lot of headaches and frustration. If you have multiple image files, you should use the arrow keys to highlight over the correct file you want to use and hit tab or enter. Additionally, you can also click on it with your mouse. I told you to store your image in the same folder as your HTML file because this makes them siblings within the folder hierarchy. This is the technical term for saying they are in the same level. 
For example, your image tag is a child of body and therefore it is tabbed in once. It is a sibling to h4 and our p tag. This is because they are all nested inside of the body tag. They should all be level with each other regarding how many tabs they are tabbed over. To reiterate, children should always be tabbed over one space to the right from their parent. Siblings should all be on the same level as each of their siblings. When files are siblings to each other, you can refer to one from the other by just using its name. We are going to learn about folder navigation later, where we will put different file types inside their own designated folders. For now, let's move on. You can add more than one attribute inside of a tag. You can add another attribute by just hitting the spacebar once and then adding your attributes one after another. On our image tag, I'm going to show you two attributes at the same time, the height and the width attribute. We are only going to set one of these for now because browsers automatically keep the same scale of the image. So if I set one, then the browser will automatically adjust the other to keep the scale of the image. Take your pick, but I'm going to stick with height. I'm going to set this to 150. Save and let's check our work. You will see that the picture is now going to be smaller. If you choose a different image, you can play around with the height and width number to get the results that you want. Next, let's validate our code by going to validator.w3.org. When we copy and paste our code, we get an error that says an image element must have an alt attribute except under certain conditions. The alt attribute stands for alternate text. You want to put a description of the image. This is important for several reasons. The first is because if your link gets broken, then the alt text will display in the place your image should be. The second is for screen readers, which will read the description of the pictures for people who are visually impaired. The last reason is for search engine optimization. If you were a business, you want Google to direct people to your site, and it does this by reading not only what is on the page, but also the data you write about the things on your website, such as your alt text. For this alt text, I'm going to type Homer Simpson eating a donut. Save this, and as expected, you won't be able to see the alt text. But let's say that someone comes in and edits my source for my image and they spell it wrong because they didn't let the editor autocomplete the file and they add an extra M in Homer. My alt text will display. Next, we are going to add a mission statement to our resume page. Let's pretend that Homer is looking to switch careers and he is interested in the opportunities that cryptography and blockchain have to offer. I'm going to write his mission statement as mission statement. My goal is to become a blockchain developer. I encourage you to save and check your work often so you can see how your page is coming together. When we check our page, we will see that we forgot to add a blank line before our mission statement. We can fix this with some more line breaks, but that gets a little messy when you have to do that for each line. This is where the P tag comes in. P stands for paragraph. It has some default attributes that will put space before and after any text that you wrap in it. Let's create a P tag, and I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to quickly move text around. Highlight over your text that you want to move, and with your cursor still over the highlighted text, click and drag it to where you want to move it. You will see this icon appear showing you where it will put the text you are moving. This will allow you to quickly add a P tag and then move your text to be wrapped in these tags. This will save you a lot of time when you realize you missed a tag or something. For demonstration purposes, I am going to put some text on the next line outside of any tags. When I save that and show you the page, you can see that the browser puts a blank line before and after any text wrapped in the paragraph tag. I'm going to delete that extra text and save. This is the end of this video.